2023 Kia. This is an electric vehicle. And so what I'm proving here right now, see where it says 186 microns? And it says 66 microns up here. That's because this sensor is located here. And the difference is what I'm reading in hose losses between the moisture and off-gassing in the hose, little oil in there, refrigerant moisture absorbed in there, and it's off-gassing. And I'm reading the difference in the length because the vacuum source, this is the three quarter inch silicone high vacuum hose. It's going directly to a metal manifold. The micron sensor is located here. So I'm basically reading the vacuum pump at this point in the manifold. Then you have the losses. You're going back down to a smaller diameter. You're going to something that is not rated for high vacuum and that's refrigerant charging hoses were never rated to go down and hold low vacuum so you have those losses and since this is such an expensive new vehicle and an expensive compressor and if you have a burnout i'm making sure i could draw out as much moisture and air contaminants as i possibly can do this on all vehicles but the electric vehicles i go a few extra little steps it's going to go through the high pressure nitrogen decay test uh definitely for sure make sure the guys put everything back together good and use it for the triple sweep of the purge and evacuate procedure three times using dry nitrogen to help purge just that little bit of extra moisture out of the system because this is poe oil and it's extremely hydroscopic and it was in a body shop and you know they leave them open sometimes to the atmosphere and we know that is not good all that bad stuff little air moisture does not do damage right now it causes acids and breakdown it causes damage months or even sometimes years later and mo many shops have the attitude oh so what it's not my problem and oh well the customer will just make more work if a compressor burns out and he needs six thousand five thousand dollars in work I make more money by destroying their car right now and not doing it right. That's the attitude to a lot of shops. And then some of them are in denial. That's the other attitude. Um, so I'm trying to squash that out of our industry by providing the information for guys who just don't know any better and had the old school guys teaching them, unfortunately. On this Kia, we went on this before. Now that it's fixed, this was from... Um, I released a video when I was doing the recovery on this a few weeks ago. And the thing looks like a Mercedes Benz emblem. Check this out. Doesn't that look like it? you got a Benz? And this model is GV60 Genesis. And did I say Kia or is this Hyundai? I don't know. Kia, Hyundai, same car. Ford, GM, Chrysler, found on road dead, whatever. Um, plate heat exchanger right here big guy really big guy that guy right there so you have your cooling expansion valve system going to this we have another plate heat exchanger right there all this is glycol all these tubes that you see all these big black tubes these are all glycol so these are all coolant from here you see this big old electric pump right there? There's a pump right there. There's a pump right there. This coolant reservoir is separated in half. Now, when I walked up to the shop, I noticed the other half was empty. So this is one of those situations where a technician goes, oh, I'm old school, I could do this. You just drive it and you put some coolant in there. Well, when I came up here and I was looking here, I seen all this coolant all the way up here to the top. That's really good, right? But what they don't notice is by being able to see the coolant all the way up to here here in the back half it was all the way empty that means that electric motor was floating in air that means every time it's turned on and that pump has to come on you have an electric motor that relies on the coolant for lubricant for the seals and cooling and uh, you're never supposed to uh, have electric motors or pumps spinning without coolant in them so it spins without coolant that's a, not a good thing and uh, a lot of air trapped in there. And what happens is any of these electric motors or the three-way valves with the electric motors, if they get air down into them with the coolant, it spins and it makes a foam, a froth, and it stops pumping. It starts like pulsating or not moving the coolant. So you have an inverter and you have all your other components 
not getting the flow of coolant through it. It has, it might have coolant sitting there, but it's no longer flowing and dissipating. In cold San Francisco, that might not be much of a problem, but if they drive off somewhere hot, uh, they're gonna have issues. So, and the other thing, they said it uh, did not flag any uh, codes for the coolant. And supposedly the customer drove this around because the damage was up and underneath with no coolant inside the heat exchanger for the glycol was driving around with no glycol in for four days and there was no no codes flashed hmm what's up with that so uh if that is the case that could be potential very expensive problems for the customer what does the system do it waits for there to be a major fault before it flashes a cold after something gets damaged or flashing it doesn't quite make sense but uh we know things happen plate heat exchanger right here Let's see where you I'm looking to see if there's a shut off valve solenoid down here no no solenoid on these right there coming back into a muffler going into the compressor so this is the compressor assembly right here it's a, it's a big compressor That's the compressor sticker that's on the compressor. I'm gonna take a little more time for you guys to look around in here. There's the accumulator right below, here's the battery. And you can see the top of the accumulator and the large suction line that goes into the accumulator. All right, where are we? Okay, so we're down to 48 microns here, and we're almost below 100 there. Now, what I wanted to do was, I'm going to isolate this because I'm going to continue vacuuming on the suction side, and I'm doing a test on these because all systems are a little different. I want to see if I keep vacuuming on the suction line, are all the hard shutoff solenoids working so good and so sealed, because many of them are, that no vacuum lowers on the discharge line on this circuit and remember this is a heat pump so that's what i'm shooting for i gotta now there's a little air trapped in the valve you're gonna see this jump up let me get the glare out of your eyes that's right there you can see it 103 so i'm gonna move this valve see it jump up that little bit of my there's not it's not a leak in the valve they trap air got to know this so i'm showing you this guys this because when you go to do this you're going to see oh something's leaking something's wrong no they trap air so what you do is you move the valves slowly in a little bit and you keep doing that until it doesn't do that no more and then you have removed the air out of the ball valve that's ball valved off that's ball valved open and right now i have this off so i only have the trapped air inside here but it's such a small volume, you will think that there's a leak because this will automatically shoot up in the air and skyrocket. And it's not that it has a leak. You cannot read this such a small vol volume because of off-gassing and stuff. This will shoot up and it's not a leak. Uh, it's hard to explain. You guys got to watch some of the good videos. Go purchase the book from True Tech Tools about vacuum. And... Uh, Otherwise, you will be very frustrated when you try to use a micron gauge because somebody will always say, oh, I don't understand. I don't know why it does this. It's called reading. It's called education. This is too difficult to try to learn by yourself usually unless somebody aids you and shows you some of the mishaps that can happen that will happen. Okay, so right now I'm isolated. Oh, I got a call coming in. I'm isolated and that's the system pressure vacuum microns right now. So now I'm going to open up the blue line. So I don't need this one no more. And I'm gonna open up the low side. And you see right there, it's, at, it's going down. So what I'm waiting for to see this go down. And it is, that is good. 
So I'm gonna dry this system out and then perform the triple purge and evacuate to help remove some more moisture out of the system before going into the high pressure nitrogen decay test. Now, you do not go right into a high pressure nitrogen decay test right away when the system is filled with moisture and air because that's like CO2 and you're pushing the moisture and air into the oil. You're entraining it into the oil by using the high pressure and going up to 175 or 200 PSI and you're making your work harder to remove it and most guys won't remove it because they say, oh, I don't want to put on a vacuum that pump and it keeps failing the micron test, it keeps going up. Well, you're the one who actually entrained moisture and air deeper into the oil by adding pressure on top of a dirty contaminated system. You evacuate it and clean it out first, then you can put your dry nitrogen into the system. All right, I'll see you on the next video.